Hello everybody, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Ben and today we are doing a little scroll saw project. So we're looking at uh, 3D cutting or, or compound cutting it's sometimes called, um, which is where we cut a piece of timber in two different planes and those intersecting cuts make something really nice and interesting. We've got a little candle project that we're going to go through today. Um, so let's get to it. Um, first things first, um, I've printed myself off a little template. So I've got a piece of paper here and it, like I say, it's on two faces. Um, this is a candle, um, but there's lots of different designs out there and we'll show you some of those um, a bit later on in the demo. First things, we've got to glue our piece of paper or our template onto our piece of wood. And I'm just using a copy dex glue. So use your kind of favored method and just got a bit of paper in behind there so I'm not gluing up our scroll saw. Um, glue I always apply to the template rather than the, um, the piece of timber and this is going to kind of all hold together. This is a, a rubber or a latex type glue. Um, so when we come to pull it off, it should all come off nice and clean. There we go. Um, today we're joined with, uh, sorry, we're joined by Colwyn on the questions. Jason's on your cameras. So any questions you've got, please just add them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer as we go along. Now there's a little perforation or some little lines on this and I'm just trying to align that onto the corner of our little block of wood and you could scale this down or, or up remember we've always got our 50 mil depth of cut on this so you could make this a little bit bigger and there we go so that's our template stuck to our piece of timber this is just a piece of uh, pine um, you can see on the top there it's still got its uh, kind of markings from from where it's come from. And I'm just gonna put some little dots on this because we need to drill through this. This is a bit like a kind of a pierced project where we're gonna need to drill right the way through um, and thread the blade through. And we'll come up with some really nice little fine cuts. So you could drill this by hand, um, but you've got to make sure it's really nice and straight, okay? If the drill bit wanders off, there is the chance that it could come out on the other side or or affect our pattern. So I'm going to do this on the pillar drill. I'm going to put my goggles on and away we go over to the pillar drill. So goggles on, like I said, we'll get the pillar drill going and I've set the depth on this one so we're not going to punch through right the way through onto the table. And I've just maneuvered our workpiece so I've got plenty to grab onto. And just take that right the way through and check I've come out the other side and we're good. So there's three holes to drill on each side. And this pillar drill just makes it nice and easy. And we know we've got that nice kind of straight drill hole. I've got a little board underneath that's to stop some of the breakout because when we come to um, cutting this on the scroll saw we don't want any little chips or anything getting caught in our extraction and things like that again maneuvering the workpiece so we've got plenty to hold on to go so I'm just going to pop that on the table and I am going to just bring that camera in so we've got a nice close-up and you can see what I've done just drilled into each of these little voids oops 
on on both sides, on both faces. Okay, good stuff. So I prefer to cut these middle bits out first because um, then you've got the strength of the timber all the way around um, to kind of hold this piece together. It's actually quite dainty and fragile once we get down into it. Um, so we need to thread our blade through the project. So we just need to release our clamps and lift that head up. Down comes the, the arm here. And i am just put that blade back in, tighten that up, and then put on some tension. Make sure that's done up nice and tight, top and bottom, before we get going. Because this is quite a deep cut, okay? There's quite a lot of material for this to cut through. I'm starting up at the top of this little flame here. I'm just going to pop my glue so I've not got that on the table of the scroll saw. And my speed's just over halfway again. We're going to use extraction, and that's really going to help when we, um, when we start cutting. It's going to pull a lot of that waste material through. And I've gone with a super skip number seven on this one so it's nice and sturdy and it's going to cut right through that material extractor on let us know if you have any problems with hearing us and away we go just following the lines just engage that blower there Make sure you can still see where we're cutting. So I'm just going to push that back a bit. And we're good. And nice gentle pressure with this. We don't want to put too much on. Because like I say, it's a fairly deep cut. And too much pressure. You know, you could potentially snap the blade. And because we'll have all that waste where well, the blade never kind of leaves the project, we don't want that to build up between the teeth and kind of cause us any issues with that. Now I'm backtracking up my cut and coming the other way. So I've got two cuts down together there to, um, to give us a nice sharp angle on our flame and it's really quite important that your blade is square to the table for this one sometimes these little chips will want to come back up and sometimes you might have to just stop the machine and just push that to one side to kind of clear the path of the blade. So just approaching that other cut we made a moment ago. Until we see that piece come free. Let's just make sure we've got that in that corner. There it goes. And you'll see it kind of pop out. That's that bit done. So loosening off the blade or the clamp. The project comes up. And we want to keep these bits. They are going to be our support when we come round to the next section or the next face that we're going to cut. Arm comes back down. And we tighten on that. And just like before, 
So nice and gently come up to our line. And then we want to follow that as best we can. A little bit more important with this uh, project to keep this nice and accurate. Um, because it is so thin when we come to the kind of finished piece. So I'm coming to my curve here. I'm just going to reposition my hands. And nice and slowly come around that curve. And along the top here. Every now and then I'll just back off the blade and see if that will allow some of that waste to clear. So the, the kind of sawdust I'm talking about. And having that extraction underneath is really helping to pull the waste out of our cut. So it's not binding on the blade. And some of these pines can be quite resinous. And with that sawdust and the resin in the timber and the heat through friction, sometimes that can clog the little gaps between the teeth and, um, and it will stop cutting. And if we're then putting a lot of force on it, it can, um, you know, it can snap the blade. So I've gone down into that corner, I've backtracked a little, and I'm just going to swing that around. And we'll come back and clean that up in a moment. Again, bring the blade right into that corner, I'm backtracking just a touch. I'm going to meet this long line here. And then meeting where we started our original cut. You see our piece there is just caught on the blade. And I'm just trimming that little section where those two cuts met. Try and tidy that up a little bit. Now come back and I'm going to hold that one down. Use the back of the blade to rest on. And then come back this way. Trim that little corner. And you should just feel them kind of pop out. And then we've got to come back to this corner. Rest on the side of the blade there. And again, just cut that until you feel it kind of pop off. And do our clamp here, lifting the head out of the way. And we'll just move this next one. The bigger sections I've kind of left in there for now, but the smaller ones, sometimes they'll drop down in the extraction plate and they can be a real pain to retrieve. Um, and you'll also get stuck on them. So tension goes back on. Just going to tweak it on the back of the machine there. And away we go. Again, we're not rushing these cuts. So I've come up to that corner and I've kind of retreated back. Uh, which way are we going to go? Let's, um, let's come down to the bottom here. I feel confident I could make a little 
the leaf cut here. And what I'm going to do is just give my blade some room to move. So I'm making some really small cuts next to that original one. I'm just nibbling away, not quite coming up to my line. I want to give my blade like a little turning space. I don't know if that's showing on camera, it's quite a small detail. Now I can rest against the back of the blade here. Get it in the right orientation and join that line nice and slowly. Let's try and get that blower in position so I can see what I'm doing here. Can we see that properly on screen there, Colin? That's showing. Sometimes that different viewpoint put my hand in the way or um, the, the little blower will get in the way and I'll be so engrossed with what I'm doing and kind of covering up the actually what I'm supposed to be showing you. And again, I'm going to make a little bit of a turning space with my blade. We could backtrack and come across that way. Let's just, for now, nibble away at this. And I'm not coming all the way up to my line on my template just yet. We can always revisit that. So, remember there's no teeth on the back of the blade there, so I'm resting that. It's not cutting anything. And then we can come up to our line, nice and tight like that. And then just keep going. And as we approach this little line here, we just come off the pressure a little bit. We don't want the blade to kind of ping out of that too much. And that'll give us a better finish where the two lines meet. So what have we got left to do on this bit? I'm just going to turn that off. And I'm going to come back this way. Remember, we didn't quite come up to our little corner there. And just trim that. Good. So, this will come off now. We've got the outside shape to cut. And I'm just going to turn off the... Extractor a moment, we got a question. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, we've got a few questions here. Oh, great. Um, first of all, Woodworking and Learning. He says, afternoon all. Um, he has to take the side table off his scroll saw to get to the bottom fastener of the blade. Therefore, dust extraction is very poor. How can he improve it? E.g. hose or top plate, that sort of thing. Um, so some of these machines will have like a cowling on the side. Um, so down the side of the um, the scroll saw there, there's something you, you might need to re remove. Actually, they come with a little T key that, that should just reach in underneath. Um, extraction with something like that. Um, on this one, it comes to a little flat plate underneath. Um, so extraction is really strong. But on, on those one, I'd, it's a kind of open body. So you've got the, um, the pipe going straight onto the um, kind of on our, our craft machines. Um, the, the extraction little pipe um, actually on the machine is just goes into the open body. Um, so you would never get the same kind of clearance. Um, sometimes closing gaps down and um, perhaps, you know, sealing up some of the, the kind of airflow where the air is just pouring in through the side, um, you know, you'll you'll improve it a bit, um, but you will get a buildup of dust. 
Um, it's just the, the kind of nature of the machines. And I guess, you know, not to be uh, blunt about it, but, um, you know, that's where the kind of higher end machines um, will have those uh, little improvements, uh, improvements in extraction, um, you know, having that open clamp underneath um, really kind of helps. Um, so yeah, it's a, a little bit of a tricky one. You're, um, you, you don't want too much um, power with with the um, with the extraction, especially on this type of machine. It pulls the um, the the piece of timber down onto the um, onto the table. But see if you can seal up any of the kind of gaps and things around, and that should help um, you know pull that dust straight through. Okay. Uh, another one here. Uh, Martin's just asking, what speed were you running the blade at there? So that is on this machine. It's just over halfway. So I've kind of um, taken it halfway. Usually I, I work just below halfway, but I feel with um, with the speed up a little bit, it kind of throws the dust out of the bottom. Um, and that kind of extra friction is getting rid of some of the dust that might clog the blade. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've taken it up a little bit from what I usually would just over halfway on this machine. Um, and I, you've got the links to the blades that you're using, but could you let everybody know what type of blade you've got there? Yeah, so this is a number seven um, super skip tooth blade. Okay, it's one of the Pegasus blades. Um, and what that has is, a, is, is that extra gap between each tooth. Um, and that allows for the dust, the um, the waste to, to build up a little bit more. Um, and every now and then I'm just backing off the cut and hopefully that will disturb the um, the kind of waste. And um, yeah, it, it, so it's a, a good one to use. Normally I'll go with a number five geometry. Um, you know, that is my kind of go to. Um, but when I start getting a thicker piece of timber, um, the, the skip tooth ones are a little bit, there's a little bit more strength to them. Um, so it's not going to snap potentially, uh, you know, we've got a little bit more strength. I can give it a little bit more welly um, and increase my speed. So the, the kind of feed rate, I can, I can um, bring up the feed rate of, of how much pressure I'm putting on that blade. Um, and it's going to have a little bit more strength um, to, to cut through that thicker piece of material. Okay. Great questions, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'd say I'll leave them for a minute. Um, we're just going to cut this outside shape. And we'll do this in two hits. So extract the back on. Remember to put the blade back in the clamp. That one helps. And I always give that an extra little push make sure it's nice and rigid in there good and off we go i'm going to come in to meet this line here and just follow it down i'll pop them to one side at the moment so i keep falling out the bottom And, you know, done a fair bit of scrolling over the years. Um, I'm quite confident to bring my hands in just that bit closer to the blade on a machine like this. If this were, you know, a bandsaw or something like that, there's no way I would be um, this close into the blade. And if you feel you're having to push very hard, you know, it might be that you need to get a new blade on the machine. Um, it's really nice. You quite often don't notice a blade getting dull. Um, but you'll soon notice the difference when you put a, a fresh blade on. Because it's a gradual process, that kind of lumping of the blade. And you kind of get used to it as you're going along. Good. 
So this is our kind of long straight line, if you will. And it's a bit like driving a car. If you're, even if you're driving along a dead straight road, you have to make those tiny micro adjustments to keep it cutting straight. Backing off the cut a little bit, see if we can't clear that weight. I felt the, the blade was, um, you know, that I was having to put a bit too much pressure on. Again, just nibbling into these little corners to give myself that room. With a thinner blade, I'd probably just swing that around. But with this number seven, it's a little bit wider than the, the um, you know, the normal blades I use. And so I'm just giving myself a little bit of space to come around those, you know, almost a 90 degree corner. So it can be a bit awkward to, to uh, hold the workpiece. Now, again, very kind of confident with bringing my hand in close to the blade on this machine. This time, quite a kind of fluffy material. And so I would usually go back in with um, a bit of abrasive or something. So if we're not, you know, 100% perfect in any of those corners, we can always dress that with a little file or a bit of abrasive. Okay. Well, let's come back in on this line. I'm cutting into the material. I'm going to lose a little bit off the top. So that's fine. And then just coming in this long sweep on the top of the candle here. With flame. Get to my grip up. the same thing. We're coming to that little corner there. Give myself a few little cuts to make room to rest the blade on, on the back of the project there and then around our curve. We have a practice with the different size blades. Sometimes the way they use are, um, you know, a little bit different. You know, you get lots of um, corners that are a lot tighter than this on a on a say a puzzle piece or something like that. Um, and those smaller blades, the number three, the modified geometry ones, they will easily take a corner like that. If at any time I get my hand in the way, just give us a shout and I'll um, switch the grip. Rest in the back of the blade there. And you'll notice I haven't come out the side. That's got a lot of information on that side. 
and I don't want to kind of cut into it if I can help it. So again, it's feeling a little bit tired or a little bit difficult to uh, push around that corner. So I've backed off, that cleared the way to seam the piece and it allows it to be a bit more free cutting. So again, this sits loose now. So I've got a bit of a funny grip going on. We'll take this all back up in a minute. And again, as we just come out the bottom of this cut, coming off the pressure, allow that blade to kind of cut its way out rather than force it there. Now we've got a little bit of work to do to bring this all back together. I'm going to find my little bits and bobs and kind of reassemble our candle. And what this is going to do is provide support when we turn this over, all of these cut out bits are going to support the cut so we don't break out of it too much. So a little mini jigsaw halfway through, and I'm gonna put just a bit of uh, masking tape. Oop. So I'm gonna Crimp that in because that's important that we keep that all together nice and tight. Can be a bit of a fiddly job, but I'm going to lay a bit of masking tape across the top there. Make sure it sticks to all those little uh, pieces. And just going to whiz off that excess at the bottom there. There's a little bit poking out the side, so I want to cover that as well. Make sure this thing. Uh, stays together. And I'm going to do it the other side, the back side of this as well. So I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but you get a lot of fluff on the back end of this number seven um, super skip tooth. It's quite an aggressive cutting um, blade. Um, but that's why I wanted it. I want, I want it to be aggressive to, you know, really cut through that thicker piece. Um, and it doesn't matter because when we, this is all waste on the outside edge, our little candle is going to be nestled right in the heart of this piece of wood. So that breakout isn't going to bother us too much. Okay, so we've cut that entirely on that plane now. Um, so we can turn it over and it's the same again. So off with that one. We're gonna lift this arm, go straight in the top there and away we go. These 3D projects, there's lots of different versions of. If I show you a couple while we're uh, just taking a breather, this is a little tulip and you can see it's exactly the same thing. It's the same picture on both sides to produce our little flower. Okay. Um, they don't always have to be the same on both sides. If we have a look at um, a couple of these other ones, they're different in that plane than they are in that one. So these compound cuts can give us some really nice little shapes. Um, some really nice little dainty 
projects. He's, look at his little um, his legs there, really skinny. And that's why it's so important to put those supporting pieces back in. And they're supporting the cut as we go. So extractor goes back on. Oh. Done it again. Put our tension on. Make sure everything's nice and tight. And there we go. Pressing the back of the blade on that little chip, bringing the project round until I can come back onto this line. And I'm just going to hold that down, create a little shoulder, and then we're off with our cut. Backtracking up my cut, and sometimes the um, the dust on this will kind of stop you from being able to backtrack. So I'm turning the machine off, so I'm not putting too much pressure on, and give it a little wiggle. See if we can't clear some of that dust down through the bottom of the extractor. And back it comes. Don't force it too much, because remember, although we have got a fairly chunky blade in there, we still don't want to snap that with too much force. If you're doing this sort of thing at home, you've got your luxury of being able to put your grip wherever you want it. Here we've got to try and keep the keep the view in camera. So we'll work through this a little bit quicker, I think. Coming back into position. Tension on. And then we're meeting our line. Oops. So I didn't snap the blade there. I just come this. I know I did. So let's just pop that one off. I'll get a fresh blade from my pack. Just a moment. So I've got my little pack of blades here. Sorry to desert you on camera there. Got a well-timed question. While you're doing that, then <laughs> I was just going to ask one, yes. Thank um, you. So, uh, Woodwork Learner again, what um, blade would you use if you were going to cut some harder timber, something like beech? The beech. So I would never go this thick with a piece of beech. Um, you know, if you're cutting uh, something a bit thinner, maybe, um, and I always favor those modified geometry blades. They're really good. They're really nice, nice cutting. Um, but it is worth considering the species when you're, um, you know, if you're, if you're doing a project like this, it is worth considering. I've got a nice kind of soft bit of pine here. Um, so it's really nice and free cutting. Um, so definitely consider your, you know, your material you're cutting when you're choosing your blades. Um, but modified geometry all the way for me, unless it's something like this. 
Um, I thought I'd get away with pushing a little bit harder then. Just resetting my blade clamp. So what's happened is my little um, grub screw here has just come back a bit. And I'm just resetting that and tighten up that clamp. Um, but yeah, modified geometry, I'm a big fan of those ones. Um, if you, while we're, while we're looking at this section and I've just put the blade back on, if you're coming up to the max, um, you know, like your 50 mil depth of cut and you're struggling to, um, you know, perhaps your, uh, your clamp head is hitting on your hold down clamp and things like that. So this part here, um, hitting onto your hold down clamp, just make sure you're holding the blade on its kind of extremity. So the top and bottom. So you've got that extra few mil. If you've got, you know, perhaps a few five mil of that blade sticking out the top, that's five mil less that you can, you can cut. Extract the arm. And I can feel the difference in the cut already, just having that fresh blade. Although I only cut one of these yesterday, that's already dulled that other blade. Coming up to my little curve here, so I'm going to switch my grip so I can bring and rotate this bit around. Sometimes the, um, the bottom of the work piece will just grab on that extraction plate a little bit and drag. And so it's just a gentle lift to get any of those kind of trailing fibers out of those holes. This blade's working really nice now. Gently back and forth into that corner. Just, just approaching the line. I'm not actually cutting up two. So I can rest my blade there and take the cut. And like I said before, if there's any little fluffy bits, you can always come in with a, perhaps a needle file. A little bit of abrasive on the corner of a stick. So easy to clean that up. And also this kind of number seven blade is never going to give you the best finish. You should get all those pieces. Now we've got a cut coming this way and that way. So we've got those kind of intersecting cuts and those bits can fall out. If you wanted to put a bit of tape on the back there, you could. I'm just gonna pick off some of these fibers. They're the things that are getting caught up on our perforations on the table here. So we can just pick them off, give ourselves a slightly easier job. Arm coming back down. And if you've got, you know, perhaps one of those craft machines where you're, um, where you're having to um, change the blade a lot, 
or, or doing perhaps a pier fit, I would definitely recommend going for that top clamp and um, undoing that one where you got access to it instead of having to backing off the cut I can feel it getting a bit perhaps clogged or something like that Nice steady pressure. And it is very much a kind of feel. You get to know how much you can kind of push these blades, how much pressure you can put on them. Again, or resting on the back of the blade there where it doesn't cut. And then across the grain there, just cutting like butter. Oop. Maybe we have jump then. So these are really nice little projects, they don't take too long. Switching my grip, downward pressure, and bring that hand around here. And just again bringing that cut in and I'm using this side to tidy up that little bit there as we come down to the bottom of that V good so we've just got the outside of this one to cut now and we're in business we can do the big reveal okay I'm just going to hit the extractor off when we've got a question here. All right. All right then, Ben. Yeah, we've got um, a few statements as well as questions. So, okay. Um, yeah, we've got... Uh, um, so Maria says um, that she's used uh, or gone through 45 mil Sapili with a number seven. It took a while plus a couple of blades, but it worked. Yeah, the... Uh, but I did a little um, a puzzle box in Sapili um, just a few weeks ago. Um, and I was really surprised by the amount of dust coming off of that uh, timber. And I found that it, it, it was a bit of a mistake, if I'm honest. Um, I really struggled with it. I think it was clogging the teeth. Um, and, um, and it was actually clogging the teeth to an extent where it actually pushed the blade off because I was having to put that much force on. It was pushing the blade, so it was kind of bending mid-cut. Um, and, of course, with something like this, if it's not dead straight, it, um, those two intersecting cuts are um, are not going to meet properly, so you'll have bits that stick on and, and stuff like that. But yeah, a real a real um, tough one to to cut through. That's appealing. And Maria's also saying this is a great way for um, for roughing out miniature carvings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I did a little um, did my little whale shark on uh, the first one I did was on the scroll saw. Yeah. Um, and Robert's asking, what what glue was that you used for the template? Oh, the glue is um, it's Copy Dex. Uh, I don't think we sell it anymore, um, but it, it's widely available. Uh, Copy Dex, as soon as you open the lid on that one, you'll remember it. Um, it's got a very, um, <laughs> let's say, a very unique smell. <laughs> um, Lawrence is saying that if you use uh, masking tape on the back of what you're doing, will that prevent the the splitting or the, the fibers. Yeah, yeah, you could use um you could use a little bit of masking tape. Um that will also um provide a little bit of lubricant. Um that sometimes the adhesive in there um kind of um kind of lubricates the blade as you're going through. So if you find you're having um lots of burning and things like that, sometimes just a, a layer of masking tape on top and on the bottom um can really help lubricate the cut as well as um as well as stopping breakout and things like that. Um, and a question for me here from Martin. He was just asking um, for the um, the spiral chuck demo, what's the best wood to use for the base of the coasters that we made? Um, Martin, if you're talking about the scrap piece, then basically anything. I tend to use engineered timbers like um, 
um, plywood. But if you're talking about the main body of the coaster, then anything, really, anything you have that's contrasting with the, the insets. Good stuff. Thanks, Cohen. <laughs> So our last bit now, we're coming around the, um, the kind of outside of our handle. I've always used that copy deck. I know lots of people use different ways. You could just transfer this... Um, this one you use a bit of carbon paper um it does need to be fairly accurate because um you know because of those intersecting cuts um you, you need to keep it fairly accurate you, um it's a difficult thing to kind of freehand but then i've also seen these where um you know you've got two different subjects on the same thing so uh, as example there's a fisherman and a I don't know, like a calf or something like that on the other face. So when you turn it round, you get these two cool, um, you know, or, or a diver and a lighthouse or something like that. Two kind of related things that look completely different just if you turn it through 90 degrees, you get these lovely little, um, lovely little things. But check out, um, you know, Google them. There's lots of free images online. This has come out of a, um, a compound cut Christmas book. I know we're a little bit early for Christmas, depending on who you are. <laughs> so keen on Christmas. It's starting to make stock of everything in these summer months. But this, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's too Christmassy, this candle. So I think I'll get away with it. So I just thought it was a really nice project and it's really nice and kind of dainty and light. We'll see in a minute when we get there. So again, I give myself a little bit of room for that blade to rest there, bringing it up right up against and resting on the side of the blade around this curve. Yeah, there's lots of really interesting patterns online for this sort of thing. And lots of them are just printable PDFs, so uh, check them out. A couple of searches you could do with the uh, 3D scroll saw um, patterns, free, free 3D scroll saw patterns. And there's all sorts of really nice ones online. I'm struggling a bit there. I might just come back to that bit. And then a bit of pressure down. Switch my grip. And then we're just coming through that last bit there. And um, then we've just got the other side. I feel like I want to rush this to get it done, but just keep it steady, keep it um, on that line. And don't rush.
it feels like this blade has a slight bias to one side now. It's kind of pinging out like it did in the bottom corner there. It may be that I pushed it a little bit too hard and some of those teeth have just clipped the underside of the table. If you feel the project's getting a bit loose in your hand, you can always grab a bit more tape, kind of mid-flow, stop the machine, and just pull a little bit out, and stick that across the top. That's going to keep those two bits together there. such a difference cutting across the grain than cutting with the grain. I think probably what is happening is that the, um, the kind of fibres of this pine are kind of pulling or catching between the two. As I come around this corner, I can just feel so much easier to cut. Going nice and slow to form a little shoulder here. And then I can swing that back around this way. And just cut the last little bit on that. Again, okay, nice and gentle as we come out of the cut. We don't want the blade pinging out and creating too much spray out. Good. So that should be it for cutting. We'll have a have a look, see, and see how this comes apart. So before okay, you do so another question. Before you do the big reveal, Ben, um, yeah. just a, a question here from Maria. Mm -hmm. um, has Ben ever done wooden gears on a scroll saw? And could we have a demo? Started to I started making a wooden gear clock and it's quite tricky stuff. Yeah, I've I <laughs> I have avoided gears um because they have to be so precise. Um but a very kind of a lovely project to take on. Um, you know, those wooden clocks and stuff and those um, kind of um, mechanisms and things like that, they are so cool when you see them ticking away and things like that. I haven't personally done any, um, so I can't really give you any advice on that, Maria. Um, I would just say take it all nice and slow. Um, keep your blade sharp. Um, yeah, I, I haven't cut any gears yet. In fact, I've, I've avoided cutting gears um, for that very reason because um, I have got the patience for it and I would like to give it a go. I think let's give it a go, eh? Let's, um, let's book it in and <laughs> give it a go. We'll do it live for the world to see. Uh, we like a challenge. So maybe we'll cut some gears. I'll have to research that a bit first. So all I'm doing here, sorry everyone, I'm getting carried away. I'm just poking out all these little bits and being really gentle with it. This is a, a very fragile little thing inside of here. And it would be a shame to you know, do all that hard work and just lose patience with it at the very last moment. Here we go, come on. And this is why it's so important to have a square blade. 
Um, because if that was drifting off halfway through the cut, you'll, um, you might cut through some of these really quite thin sections. And it's a lovely little project. I've got another one here that I made, made earlier. We've got a little pair of candles there now. Really pretty little things. Um, and like I say, that's, oops, cool, that was a close one. <laughs> so we'll put them there. Well, I've got a bit of a slope on my table anyway, but there's loads of little projects you can do. Like I say, you can mix up the sizes so you can have little kind of family groups or things like that. Oh, but put, keep them on a flat table. So that's kind of compound cutting on the scroll saw. Okay, got some really nice little projects. Um, loads, like I say, there's loads of designs out there. Um, check it out. I'm really fun. Um, that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, um, please give us a thumbs up and, um, and share. Um, we'll see you back here soon for another workshop wisdom. <laughs>